You guys ready for the Word of God? <clears throat> We're in a series called Work Hard, Worship Hard, Be Fruitful. And this is the end. We're landing this plane called Work Hard, Worship Hard series. And uh, today I want to talk to you about working for rest. Okay, I'm, I'm going to talk to you about rest. I cannot just finish this series um, uh, without talking about how important rest is in our life. Uh, God designed this world in such a way that it has certain rhythms in this world. Amen? So there is spring, summer, fall, and winter. And it just keeps going and going and going and going. There is day and there is night. There is you're young and then you're middle-aged like me and then you're old. There are six days that the Bible says you should work and on the seventh day, you should rest. And those rhythms are built by our Creator. And so if we try to go against them, we will break. They won't break. We break. And so uh, it's important uh, to find these rhythms. And today is going to be a message on wisdom where we find these rhythms. We discover these keys to the kingdom. And we try to not fight them, but go with them. Amen? To go with them and so today i'm going to talk to you about rest and the bible said you should work six days on the seventh you shall rest and um uh, you know like i was young and i didn't think that applied to me because i'm under new testament you know uh, uh, i'm the lord of sabbath because jesus said you know he's the lord of sabbath sabbath is not made for man meaning man was not made for sabbath sabbath was made for man and so I lived like that for 10 years, and I remember us getting married, and I was already in business for like five years or six years, and we bought a new, ho a new home, and all of that, you know, on an acreage, a lot of work, if you know what I mean. Home is a lot of work. Marriage, new marriage is a lot of work. Uh, business is a lot of work. I'm trying to grow this business, and so I am overwhelmed. And I got to the point where I almost had a mental breakdown. And I think I would have if, if it wasn't for the grace and mercy of our Father God. Amen. And I remember going on a 10th year anniversary and our friends from a different state invited us to go. And we were staying at this beautiful beach hotel where you walk out only a few feet. You go into the ocean and you have the most amazing snorkeling in the world. Not just in Hawaii, in the world where there's turtles and you could touch a turtle back, you know, as it goes by you and like looks at you like. What's up, dude? You know, they are really like that. So peaceful. They're just like, what? Why are you touching me? <laughs> and so, but I, I, I remember going to that uh, place and, and just having this breakdown, just the burnout. And I remember um, our friends uh, uh, wanted to hang out and have fun. And I just shut down. I'm so embarrassed because I shut down because I, I was living out of rest, without rest. I was living a life that was in disobedience to God. God knows best because he designed this world in a way that works best. And I said, no, I'm just going to do it my way. I'm a Christian. Uh, that doesn't apply to us anymore. And I paid the price. And it took me like six to seven days, probably six days to recover. And, um, and, and I said, I got to do something. I got to do something. I got to change my life. And today I want to talk to you on uh, seven secrets to rest. Seven different types of rest that you need. This is not going to be a super spiritual message. This is going to be a wisdom message. So I'm not expecting everybody to go, whoo hallelujah, preach, you know, nothing like that. This is more, I want you to write. I want you to write stuff down. I want you to uh, remember stuff and I want you to apply it to your life. Amen? Um, so there are seven different types of rest. I'm basing this message on a book called Sacred Rest by Dr. Sandra Dalton-Smith, who's a, an MD. And she wrote on seven different types of rest. And this book, this um, idea changed my life. Because you can have rest in one area and have no rest in another area. How many of you know you could have nine hours of sleep and still wake up and be tired so sleep is not the problem rest is 
How many of you know you can have great relationships, great people, but your mind just won't shut up? And you need mind rest. Maybe you, you're physically not tired, but your mind is tired. So there's rest that we need in different areas of our life. So number one area of rest that everybody here needs is physical rest. Physical rest is um, maybe you have a hard job. Maybe you work 8 to 12 hours a day. Maybe you have an office job, but your eyes hurt, your neck hurts, your back hurts. Everyone here who has a job knows what it is to be physically fatigued and tired. Your back, your muscles, your legs, your feet hurt, your eyes hurt, and you need rest. Two, two ways you can get rest. Number one, you could take a nap. Okay? In the middle of the day, if you're into that. I love naps. Actually, in my 30s, I discovered naps. And, uh, uh, you know, because until I was 10, my grandma and mom made me take a nap, and I hated it. You know, <laughs> but in my 30s, I discovered that I actually loved what I hated when I was a kid. Uh, and so, um, so you need a, a good sleep. Another uh, is um, making sure you have enough sleep during the night. I'm so protective of my sleep right now. You don't even know it. My wife loves starting movie in the evening. She comes alive in the evening. And so at like 9 30, 10 o'clock, she will start a movie with me. She's like, honey, watch a movie with me. And I'm like, yeah. And then at, at 10 30 hits, and I'm like, bye, Tanya. <laughs> because I am, I value my rest so much, my sleep so much, because I work physically during the day. Many of you work construction, electrician, you're on a ladder painter. You know, you, you, many of you work these kind of jobs, and you need physical rest and you got to protect it and you got to be um you got to value it and make sure you get enough of it and so um i get enough of physical rest but there's other rest that i don't get and so it's naps and it's also making sure you have a good night's sleep i know people who have not been able to sleep and um they're constantly living in a fog they're constantly living in um, just mental, um, no mental clarity. Sometimes you might have to go to a doctor because maybe you have a sleep apnea. Some of you are like, no, pastor, pray for me, and that's it. Well, I could pray for you. Maybe it's an emotional condition. Maybe it's a spiritual condition, but maybe it's a natural condition. And maybe doctors can help. Like, some people are like, Pastor, can you pray for my tooth? My tooth hurt. And I was like, I'll pray for it, but you need to go see a dentist. Okay? And the most spiritual thing you can do is go see a dentist. All right? Same thing. Sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do, if you can't sleep, you can go see a doctor. Jesus confirmed this. He said the, the healthy don't have a need of a doctor, but the sick do. He didn't say we don't need doctors. He said, we need doctors, and that's why God blessed this world with doctors. And if you have a plumbing condition, call a plumber. And you don't have problems calling a plumber. You don't pray about your plumbing. Lord Jesus, my plumbing is bad. My toilet is all backing up. Please, I lay hands on it. I lay hands on it. <laughs> your hands are going to get dirty. Just call a plumber. They're good at it. God called them to do that. Amen. I just want to tell you that I feel the Spirit of God in this house right now. I know there's angelic presence in this place. So um, I know this message might be funny and practical and wise, but Spirit of God is moving. Here's what Satan does. He may, takes us out of rest because that's where he works. God works in your rest. Okay? Satan works in your stress. Write this down. Put it on social media. Okay. God works in your rest. Satan works in your stress. That's why he wants you to be stressed up, depressed. You know, he wants you. So that's why the Bible says strife or labor to enter into his rest. God wants you to work in rest. That's where faith works best. That's where blessing works best is in, when you're in rest. But when Satan can shake you, disturb you, then he can cause all kinds of negative thoughts, all kinds of lies for you to believe. And so that's why a job of a Christian is to labor to enter into this rest. Okay? Anyway, where, where was I going? 
I was on a road, but the Spirit of God distracted me. I felt the Spirit of God. And I just wanted to tell you that He is in this house. So make sure, make sure that you get enough rest. A lot of times depression comes because you don't get enough rest. You know, you go on two to three hours of sleep a night, and that's just bad for your physical being. Amen? And so make sure you get that uh, rest in your life. Number two, um, the second type of rest that all of us need is mental rest. Have you ever had your mind feel like it was clogged up and you, you were thinking negative or thinking too many thoughts at the same time? It's like your mind was trapped in a maze and couldn't get out. Some of you sleep and you wake up and your mind just, you can't sleep because your mind is stuck in some kind of a maze and it's trying to figure it out. And what you need to do in those cases is wake up and reboot yourself. A lot of times it's a good idea to go and read the Bible when don't try to sleep through it. I'm, I, I said this, how many of you are into fishing? If your fishing line is stuck, don't cast, try to keep casting. Stop. What do you do? You fix the fishing line. You might may need to cut something or you need to untangle it. And then you start casting again. Same thing with sleep. If you can't sleep because you're, you're mentally overwhelmed, wake up, go get a glass of water, go pray, go read the Bible for 10, 15 minutes. Get out of that clogged up space. Get out of that maze consciously and then go back to sleep and you'll sleep really well don't fight the maze get out of it okay and so mental clogged up mind or thinking sometimes you can get enough sleep but if your mind is not rested uh it it, it ruins everything in your day amen for example a person walks into a grocery store trying to remember three items that they went to get and they forgot have you ever been there and you're like 25 years old <laughs> you know you're not 90 or nothing you're you're a young person you're in your 30s but you forget because your mind is so just clogged up mentally and so you need to find rest you need to untangle yourself you need to find areas where uh, you will and here's the good thing about being a Christian we can go to the Lord Usually we're, we're clogged up with all those worries we have, right? With all those thoughts. And, and as an unbeliever, I don't know who you go to. But as a believer, I know that all things work together for my good. So even though maybe my life is not perfect right now, or I'm facing some kind of a problem or situation, I know God will turn it for my good. So I can rest in that. I can remind myself that I'm blessed. You can remind yourself that you Peace of God is yours. It's your inheritance as a believer, peace of God. And so you don't have to live in constant worry and anxiety. You can come to God and receive that peace. Don't live in this mental, clogged up turmoil, fear, anxiety, and worry. Mental rest. Do you get enough of that? My job is often, uh, I just was um, at work driving from one end of town to another with uh, two of my employees. And these guys were like, after we drove to a job, they're like, I've never seen somebody talk so much on the phone, take so many different uh, things while you drove. Uh, because that is my job. You know, uh, I'm driving and uh, I'm just talking this guy called this guy calls then I got to write this down you know <laughs> just busy life and and sometimes you need to find place to untangle mental rest you can get physical rest but if you don't get mental rest so some of you are like I don't need physical rest I know you don't but you need mental rest and you need to discover you need to go and find and figure it out how to Find rest for your mind, okay? For your worries, for your fears, for your anxieties. And the Bible is full of the answers. Jesus said, cast your worries upon, cast your cares upon him. 
right? The Bible says that. All right, Jesus got, says, Come to me, all who, you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you rest. That's that mental rest, okay? Uh, so I don't think Jesus spoke to physical rest here. Because if you come to Jesus, you work, you're a workaholic, and you work 24-7, and then you come to Jesus, Jesus, give me rest. He'll be like, I already told you how to get it. Work six days, take a day off, right? But what kind of rest is he talking about here? It's that mental rest. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy burden, and I will give you that mental rest. And that's what we desperately need, that rest, mental rest. The third area of rest that we need is social rest. Some of you work with many people. Let me see a show of hands. How many of you work with many people? How many of you are around people all the time? When you work with people, people will drain your energy. I want to say there's two types of people in the world. There's those who give you energy and there's those who take energy. Now, people who take your energy are not bad people. It could be your kids. Moms, do your kids ever take your energy? Yes. Moms, do your husbands ever take, drain your energy? Never. <laughs> Said husbands. Right. Um, husbands, do your wives ever drain your energy? Maybe as soon as you get home from work and she's like, here's the list. Get it done. Right? So it's not bad. People who drain our Energy. The problem is not with people. For example, being a pastor, people constantly want something from you. At work, being a boss, people constantly want something from you. And that takes energy. It takes energy. And if you only live in such a way that people take your energy, but, you, but nobody ever replenishes your social energy, then you will be fatigued and unrested. You can get sleep, but you have no energy because you socially drained who are the people who give us social energy who are the people who add to our social energy well uh, it's the people who don't need anything from you it's the people you hang out with you could be yourself with and they don't need anything from you they just want to be there with you like my wife is my wife is both she, sometimes during the week, she overloads me with stuff. Especially because she works in a church too, she overloads me with church stuff. And I'm like, honey, I don't need to know all this. You guys can solve this on your own, you know? <laughs> um, and then, but, um, but then there's other times on the weekends when we go out like to a lake or we go and rest somewhere to a park, that's when she replenishes my energy. So, she, so one person could be both actually. But you need time to replenish your social energy. You need to be with people you're, um, uh, who you're not just giving to, but the people who give back to you, the social energy. Do you have those people in your life? And it's usually one or two or three people at max that you have. But that's why um, a party like we had for our leaders and volunteers on Friday, that was hopefully a place where you had your energy restored because you were around people who helped you restore energy. I hope you have friends. If you don't, you have to look for those kind of friends. And oftentimes people who are good at restoring energy, uh, they have so many people uh, who want to be with them. So sometimes you have to call them and schedule the appointment with them to hang out with them. Never be, oh, nobody's, I'm lonely. Nobody's inviting me anywhere. I'm just home alone. Well, there's a phone and you could call them and you could text them and say, hey, what are you doing today? Let's, uh, what are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing this week? Let's hang out. Let's make time. Everybody needs it. They need it as much as you need it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is this speaking to anybody? Your, if your social, social energy tank is depleted, you need to refill it. You need to be around people who can help you with that. Number four. Ready for this one? We also need spiritual rest. 
mental, social, that's, Im that's soul rest. Um, but we also need spiritual rest. What is spiritual rest? Um, how many of you know your spirit, soul, and body? Right? Your body needs rest, your soul needs rest, but also your spirit needs rest. A person who has no, who does not have a relationship with the Creator cannot truly have spiritual rest. Because spiritual rest is having that restoration of relationship with, with the Creator. Let's say a husband does something really bad and now his wife is mad at him. The connection, their connection is severed. It's broken. I said this before. If a, if a man or a woman commits adultery, right, and the other finds out, what does it do? They might still live in the same house, but there is a big rift between them. There is like huge divide between them. And unless they reconcile, get help, get counseling, you know, forgive one another, that rift will exist. Well, that's the same thing between a human and God. There's a huge rift because of sin. And sin is, our sin against God is way greater than adultery between husband and wife. Our sin is so much greater because he's holy, he's perfect, right? And so... When we enter into that rest, Bible says, that's when we only find rest. How many of you know people search and go from religion to religion, from next big thing to a next big thing, looking for that rest? Personally, I want to just tell you that I found that rest. And I'm no longer looking into any other religion, trying to find, you know, that rest. Because Jesus Christ has fulfilled that. He fills that void in my life life i i think uh, one of the famous philosophers uh, said that a man will always have a hole god-sized hole in his heart and that can only be filled with christ with a relationship with christ now so what do unbelievers fill this hole with see bible says don't be drunk with wine but be filled with the holy spirit Right? So there's two options. You can be filled with God, that God-sized hole, or you can, be, you can fill that God-sized hole with an addiction. This is where addiction seats. It tries to replace God in our life. It tries to replace the relationship, but it can never do it. And in the process, it destroys the person who is addicted. And so... How do you feel? How do you get spiritual rest? And I'm going to say easy stuff. You know this, but prayer is one of the way, ways you get spiritual rest. If you're just restless in your soul, get on your knees, get into a secret place, Bible says, into a quiet room and, to, and pray. Once a month here at church, we have a prayer night. Third Wednesday of the month at 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Um, just amazing time. At first, you're like, you don't want to go. Your flesh really doesn't want to pray. Your flesh doesn't really want to worship, does it? Your flesh doesn't even want to be here because it could be somewhere else. It's nice outside. <laughs> yeah. And so, but, but, so you fight that first um, bombardment of thoughts and attacks from the enemy and arrows of the enemy. And then once you remove that out of the side, you enter this perfect peace. I'm not a leader of this prayer group on Wednesday. I'm not. But I don't think I've ever missed one. Why? Is it because I'm a pastor? No. It's because I find something there that money cannot buy, that watching TV cannot give, that scrolling through TikTok stories cannot ever do can never do the reason you don't like prayer yet because you have not tasted true prayer and so because you have never fought that initial bombardment in the beginning of prayer the hardest part of prayer is the beginning once you enter in that space that 
dimension. You don't want to leave. You don't want to leave. And so prayer is one of them. Word of God is another. Your spirit is hungry for the word of God. And you could starve your spirit or you could feed your spirit. And if your f- spirit is strong, you can overcome adversity a lot easier when your spirit is weak. And so you want to build up your spirit. You want to feed your spirit with the word of God. Because I have seen people, and you've probably seen people, maybe you've been and I've been, where some small things just totally knocks you off your feet. Like some news comes in and that's it, it ruined your day. Your spirit is weak. Your spirit is weak. You got to feed that spirit, man. So when trials come, when adversities come, when hardships come, you'd be able to stand. Have you noticed there's people who, who count it old joy when they enter trials? And then there's people who count it disaster, end of the world. That's it. We're never going to make it anymore. And every week it happens. <laughs> you know, that, this is it. We're going to die now. Some people say, oh yeah, this is just going to make me stronger. This is just a spiritual workout, this, this moment. And some are like, that's it, it's over. Life is done. And then Satan comes in and just says, just end it. Just take your own life. This is it. See, Satan works in stress. God works in rest. Satan works in anger. God works in peace. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart. Guard it. Because that's what he wants to do. He wants to come in and sow a lie. And once he sows a lie, you will self-destruct. Once, he so- once you put a virus into a computer, it will self-destruct. Leave it alone. Just give it time. It will self-destruct. The same thing with a lie. Once lie enters your mind, your heart, it will do the work. Satan just can leave you alone for the next two years and you'll self-destruct. Because you believe a lie. And that's why God says you got to believe this. This report, not that report. Hallelujah. That's why you got to renew your mind with this and believe what this says, not what, whatever bombardments that are coming your way into your life and so you need spiritual rest you get it through worship through prayer through being in a service through um being in a small group you know you get that spirit the spiritual rest is spiritual rest your deficit is it something you're missing in your life Are you trying to fill it with something else? Man, are you trying to fill it with pornography? Pornography is a sin. You know that? And sin destroys you. It's a poison of the soul. Sin comes in and that's all it does. So um, don't defend it. Oh, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Don't defend it. If you're fighting it, fight it. Fight it like an enemy. Don't make, make excuses for a liar. Sin is a liar. Don't make excuses for it. Fight it. St. Paul says, fight the good fight of faith. Fight. If you only saw what happens in the spirit realm every time you fight pornography. All the demons of hell try to attack you again, but God says, I can give you victory. And pornography is like magnet to the metal. The further you move the magnet from metal, what what happens? The less power it has. So the longer you fight this sin, same with addiction, the longer you're away from it, the less hold it has on you. But the closer the magnet is to a piece of metal, you just release the magnet and just snaps. And so, make sure you find that spiritual rest in your life. It's not just sleep. It's also your spirit. It's not just sleep. It's also your soul. Number five, 
After spiritual rest, it's called sensory rest. You know what sensory is, right? We're bombarded, bombarded with pictures, stories, ideas, political things on our phones. Every day we see so much. We spend, uh, I think people spend like, what, six hours a day on social media now? I don't know if that's right. Somebody needs to Google. But it's a lot of times on social media. That's a lot of information. Plus radio, plus TV, plus uh, billboards, plus uh, friends and family. Uh, we're bombarded with ideas, thoughts, and our senses are overloaded. And this is the area I struggle with. I get my physical rest. But a lot of times while I'm physically resting, I'm doing something else on my phone. Guess what I'm doing? I go between apps. And then I go back to the apps and repeat. And that's not good for you. And so you can get sleep and you wake up still have no rest because you never disconnect. Two weeks ago we were at the lake and we made a rule that day. We said no phones on the boat. Do you remember that, Abby? <laughs> Abby's awesome. She sings beautiful, doesn't she? <laughs> but um, uh, I don't know if she agreed on it or not, but we just said it, you know. And we said whoever picks up their phone will buy ice cream for everybody. Oh. Yeah, she didn't buy ice cream, but she did pick up her phone. <laughs> but that day, I took my glasses off. I took my phone away, put it away, like, and I've never touched it. And it was the best uh, resting time I've had in a long time. I disconnected yesterday we were at the lake and it was a little bit cold so I was under a blanket you know <laughs> and um, and I was with my phone and guess what in comparison to a week before my mind didn't rest and so do you have time to disconnect to to rest maybe you're fatigued maybe you're so tired maybe you're just bone tired because you need to disconnect. Just for a couple of hours in a day, just disconnect. No phone between 2 and 5. You know, no phone between 7 and 9 or 10. You know, no phone between 2 hours before bed. I don't know what you need to do, but you need to take care of yourself. And God will give you wisdom and understanding and knowledge of how to do this. So you can function at your best. Because God works when you are at rest. Satan works in your life when you are stressed. Your worst ideas, your most suspicious thoughts come to you when you are stressed. You suddenly start being like jealous of people. You suddenly start being angry at people, envious of people. Suspect people hate you. Those are the thoughts that enemy plans. But his playground is when you are stressed. And God's playground is when you are at rest. And so the Bible says labor to enter into his rest. That's Hebrews chapter uh, 4 verse 6 and verse 11. It says labor. It takes work. It doesn't just come because you heard a message. This message has the power to transform your life. Enter into rest. Number six. And I got two minutes, so I got to go quick. <laughs> Number six is emotional rest. Yeah. Social rest and emotional rest are kind of connected. Emotional rest. Ah. <sighs> Is when you can rest your emotions. <laughs> That's deep, right? Say it again. Come on. Preach. Write that down. <laughs> Emotional rest when you can rest emotionally. Okay, here, here goes. If you're a leader, if you are working with people, people will drain you. Right? Am I saying that correctly? 
And here's where people drain you emotionally. When you're a boss, you have to act like a boss, and that's draining. When you're a teacher, you have to act like a teacher, and it's draining. If you're a manager, supervisor, you have to act like a certain way. If you're a pastor, how many of you know people want their pastor to act a certain way? And I try really hard to do that. Mostly. Mostly, yeah. But um, who can you be with where you don't have to act, where you don't have a mask on? Who is it in your life who you can be, your hair could be like this, your teeth are not brushed, <laughs> and they still accept you and love you the way they are. Not a lot of people like that in your life. If you have two or three, that's like, psh. I know my wife, my wife that is that for me. With her, I could be truly myself. She's seen me naked. So I'm, it's, she knows every part of my glorious body. Hey, the Bible says so. They were naked and not afraid. Hey, I'm just talking Bible, everybody. Now focus over here. Focus over here. Have you heard about those two, um, uh, what are they called? X-Man. Lumberjacks. Two lumberjacks worked together in the same forest. They worked eight hours. But one would take one hour and go and disappear somewhere, go home. And the other one would just work for eight hours chopping wood. Finally, at the end of the day, they both had the same amount or the guy who took an hour break had more wood chopped up than the one who worked eight hours. So finally, the guy who works eight hours goes to the guy who works seven hours and says, where do you disappear and how do you do this? Do you know some magic trick? Why do you cut so much more wood than I do? What do you do when you disappear for one hour? He said, I go home and sharpen an axe for an hour. <laughs> Did that distract you? Okay. <laughs> Okay, and so <sighs> emotional rest where you don't have to pretend. Emotional rest when you don't have to act all perfect. You can truly, truly be yourself. Do you have people like that in your life? Because you need it. And number seven is the creative rest. How many of you know it takes creativity to solve daily problems that life throws at us? How many of you have been in a place like, I just can't think. I don't know how to do this. It's a simple task. It's like, I got to mow the lawn, but I don't know where to start. I just, I've been dreading mowing my lawn for two weeks. The grass is up to my knees. The weeds are right here. Where do I start? You need to rest your creativity. And the best place to do that is, for us, we go to a lake a lot. It, right? Where you go and where you don't give, but you receive. Sometimes going to a lake, like, man, it's, again, we're going to the lake. All right? I got so much work to do at home, right? I mean, so much work to do at home. And, um, but when you get to the lake and you just sit there for a moment and you're like, I don't know why, but I need this. I don't know why, but this is good for my soul. Maybe it's mountains for you. Maybe it's, you know, Newton Hills or something. Maybe it's a park here or waterfalls. Whatever. Find a place where you can get recharged creatively. Because life throws a lot of things for you to need to be creative. I got to throw a party for my kids. Creativity. I got to uh, throw a party for my husband or wife. Creativity. I got I to gotta buy a gift. We use creativity more than we say we do. And so you need to get that part of you restored as well. And so the question is, which part of you needs rest? Is it spiritual? Is it emotional? Is it mental? Is it sensory? Is it physical? Okay, all of the above. Yes, all of the above. Um, this book will change your life. This message will change your life. Um, 
Make sure you write this name down. Make sure you write this name down. Dr. Sandra Dalton Smith. It's called sacred rest. Because remember, God works when you are at rest. And Satan works in your stress. Were you blessed today by this message? All right, stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. Let's pray. Ask God today to give you wisdom to tackle the area that's most depleted. Start with one area that's most depleted in your life. What is that area? I know Holy Spirit already told you what it is while you were listening. If it's sleep you need, then you need to start there. If it's social rest you need, you need to start there. If it's emotional or mental, that's where you need to start. And I pray this. Close your eyes and bow your head. Father, in Jesus' name, help your people today. Restore them. David says only you can restore our soul. Restore our mental health, Lord. Restore our physical health, our spiritual health. Restore us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And I speak today by faith to your people. I speak peace. Come on, as I say peace, you say I receive it. I speak peace to you. I receive peace. Come on, say it. Lord, I receive your peace right now. Breathe it in. Come on, I receive it. It's my inheritance. I receive rest. If you have not trusted the Lord as your Savior, you cannot truly enter that spiritual rest which you desperately need. And if you would like to do that today, if you would like to trust the Lord today, would you right now say, Lord... I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus died for my sins. Come on, you could just say it in your heart right now or just whisper it. I believe in Jesus. I surrender my life to Jesus. I ask Holy Spirit to come in and dwell in my heart and to change my life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know somebody just gave their life to the Lord today. And it is real. And I thank you, Father, for that. And I thank you today that moms are going to find rest. And fathers are going to find rest. And grandparents and parents and single moms and dads are going to find rest today in you. And they're going to protect it so you can work in it. We thank you and praise you. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Were you blessed today? Thanks for tuning in to New Life Sermon Series Online. If you're blessed by these messages and are interested in helping spread the word of God to others, make an investment today. You can give at newlifechurchsf.org. If you have a story or a testimony to share, let us know on our website as well. We hope you have a blessed day and enjoy today's message by Pastor Alex.